Hey everybody. All right. So welcome. Welcome to Divine Conversations. My name is Eric. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, so welcome to your Twin Flame reading. Yes. So this was supposed to be live, but if you saw what was going on there, if you tuned in for it when it was live and you noticed that everything kind of went wonky, um, Mercury is still in retrograde. Yes. So we're dealing with that. So instead of doing it live and instead of skipping it again altogether, um, I'm going to, I'm recording it. And so here we are. Yeah. Welcome to your twin flame reading. This is going to be a collective energy check in. Yes. So how this is going to be structured. I'm going to start by, um, channeling some messages for the collective as a whole, and then we're going to split it up into both sides. Divine Feminine is first, Divine Masculine is second. Please keep in mind, time is an illusion, energies are fluid, so this is a timeless message. Whenever you are guided to watch this reading, then that is the message for you in that time. Also keep in mind that this is a general reading, all right? So this is not necessarily going to resonate for everyone or every all of it is most likely not going to resonate for you, okay? Um, also, keep in mind that we all have masculine and feminine energy within. So just because I'm going to be speaking to both sides of the coin individually, it doesn't mean that um, it has anything to do with gender. Also, keep it, if you want to, look at it from a point of view of your inner masculine energy or your feminine at masculine energy. That actually, I think, is ideal. Just like many of the other um, of, us, of, of us twin flame readers out there, we're kind of promoting this energy of trying to see how you can res or connect with these energies within yourself instead of just watching these readings solely to check up on what a person external to you is going through, okay? Um, yeah, that's all I want to say. So with that said, let's get to it. Hi, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the Twin Flame Collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for both the Divine Masculine Collective and the Divine Feminine Collective and all of us put together. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, kids. So what we're doing first is we're going to look at what's going on with the collective right now as a whole. So this is both the divine masculine and the divine feminine put together. And I just want to see what messages spirit has for the collective right now as a whole. We're going to start with the sacred destiny oracle. Okay. One last shuffle here. All right, spirit, what messages do you have for the divine masculine and the divine feminine collective put together for the twin flame collective as a whole? What messages do you have for us here? Okay, that's enough. We're going to stop there. Ah, all right. Overall energy. We're starting you off, guys, with a new beginning. Okay. Ooh, wow. All right. Uh, what I just heard is taking the gloves off. So for both sides of the equation, you could be finding yourself in a brand new space in your life, in a brand new phase in your life. That's what I'm really feeling for the collective. And it makes perfect sense. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we have first card out is leadership. And this is a collective message. This is definitely a collective message. And this is definitely something that has been coming through for us for some time. We have to understand that being on this journey is definitely um, a journey of leadership. Okay. We're leading, we're, for the most part, we're leading by example. We're needing to lead by example. And there is a strong urgency coming through from spirit. Uh, as, okay. Okay. Especially the angels. Um, they're really coming forward with this right now. And so what I'm, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to get a message from this, some guidance from the angels, the Oracle, the angel, the Oracle of the Angels deck, but uh, on leadership especially. But they're really, really trying to get us to understand that we do have a leadership role here. Even if you're not like, say like me, you're, you're not a, a reader or, you know, something like that on YouTube or whatever, wherever, 444, um, 
you have to understand that we're leading by example in terms of anchoring and bringing unconditional love down to the surface of the earth. That's what they just said, okay? And uh, another message that's coming through with that is needing to love yourself. So doing whatever it is you need to do for yourself so that you can love yourself fully, so that you can honor yourself fully, okay? Um, if that means disconnecting from people or taking some time away or focusing on your self-care, then that's an excellent choice for you to make. You have to show others how to care for themselves by setting boundaries and practicing what you preach. So if you're someone that's encouraging somebody else, a family member, a loved one, a friend or whatnot, whatever, to, to take time for themselves, take advantage of a, a, a period where there's a lull in the energy, there's a lull in the movement or the, the, whatever is going on with their lives, to take some time and separate and decompress and just be on their own, be with themselves for a while, then that's also something that you should be doing for yourself when the time is right. Again, practice what you preach. It's time for us to walk the talk, yeah? That also comes in terms with you, between you and your divine counterpart, right? Um, yes, unconditional love is a thing. You need to hold unconditional love for your counterpart, whether it's your divine masculine or your divine feminine. But also, you need to hold unconditional love for yourself. And if things are really getting toxic or if things aren't necessarily going the right way or, you know, you're ha you're, you need to set some boundaries, then set those boundaries, Okay, just because someone may be your counterpart, it doesn't make that, that relationship any more susceptible to the need for boundaries, to the need for self-care than any other relationship in your life. Yes, just because someone is your divine counterpart, that does not give them a pass to walk all over you, to treat you like shit, to, to take advantage of you, to use you, to, to, to subject you to narcissistic abuse and, and any of that stuff, right? You have to lead by example. So for the Vi Divine Feminine Collective specifically, Spirit is saying, if that means you need to walk away from your Divine Masculine, then that's exactly what you need to do and, do it, it, and don't allow yourself to hesitate, okay, in doing so. We have security here. And I'm also, what I wanna do with, with this, I wanna, I wanna go a little bit deeper with the tarot for security, that's something that's coming through. But the big message that's coming through with security right now is to understand that we are all safe. We are all secure in whatever, wow, okay. Um, I just heard in how the divine masculine is treating us. So okay, so divine feminine, you are safe, you are secure, you are loved, regardless of what's going on with your divine masculine divine masculine the same goes for you if you're on, if you are the subject to some sort of narcissistic abuse you need to understand that you are loved you are cared for you are secure you are safe in this journey if you tend to be the person that is exhibiting the narcissism or what and what not whatever any of that stuff keep in mind that you are safe and you are loved as well especially by your divine counterpart yes by your divine counterpart but especially also by spirit Okay, everything that is happening on this journey for us is something that needs to be experienced, regardless of whatever it is. So take your experiences, take the lessons that you're learning with a grain of salt, is what Spirit just said. Like, don't try not to take it so personally. Try to understand that someone else's reaction towards you or someone else's how someone acts towards you or what or any of that is more of a reflection on them than it is you. But also hold your boundaries, okay? That doesn't give some, again, that doesn't give someone the express right to walk all over you there, right? And then finally, we have forgiveness. This is huge. Especially what I'm hearing for the divine masculine counterpart, okay? And uh, forgiveness for yourself. That's a big one. I mean, I really don't, uh, there really isn't much else to say other than, Forgiveness is key in this journey. And not just for your divine counterpart, but for everyone, for all. I mean, unconditional love is forgiving. But again, just because you're expressing or holding unconditional love for yourself and for others around you, it doesn't mean that you are lacking in boundaries or you should be lacking in boundaries. As unconditional love does not give someone the express right to walk all over you. All right? So let's get into the... the uh, clarification here and I want to go to the oracle of the angels I want to see what 
the angels have to say about this leadership energy. Okay, so what do you want to tell us about this leadership energy, please, angels? Leadership. Ah, letting go, you guys. So um, I just heard walk away if you have to. You have to lead by example. You have to set the record straight. If you're going to sit here and tell people, you know, X, Y, uh, so and so, you know, you or you know, you deserve better X, Y, and Z, blah, 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 whatnot, whatever, then you have got to take advantage of the situation is what I'm hearing and move it. Ah, I'm saying move. I want to say move it in your favor. That's kind of what I'm hearing from the angels here. Um, that means taking your power back and letting go, but also letting go is also letting, talking about letting go of the past hurt, the past pain, the past prideful energy, any of that stuff. Okay. Yeah. Let's see a little bit more. Let's see what else we have. Ah, you have, I am beautiful. You got to allow people to understand that. Um, you are beautiful just as you are. So another aspect of this leadership role here is unconditionally loving yourself and recognizing your beauty and honoring that, honoring the beauty of your soul, the beauty of your individuality. Yes, that is a huge part of this leadership role. You can't hold conditional love for, you, you can't hold unconditional love for other people and not express or hold that towards yourself, not express that towards yourself. So if you're going to hold unconditional love for others, hold unconditional love for yourself and just let yourself be naturally the person that you are, the beautiful being that God, source, creator, whomever you identify with, resonate, resonate with, however you see it, the way they created you, because you're exactly who you need to be, especially if, you're, if you find yourself or even your counterpart. If you find your counterpart in an energy that is undesirable for your needs or your wants or for your life, that doesn't mean that's not where they need to be. That does not mean that that's not the perfect place for them at this moment. They have to be who they are. They've got to go through their journey. They've got to learn their lessons, but they've got to do it on their own. Just like you do it on your own, right? Excellent. One last card here, please. Angels, what else do you want to say with, to us about this leadership energy? Comfort. Okay, so the comfort did come out in reverse. And what I'm getting with that, and then, okay, we have application at the bottom of the deck. Beautiful. So comfort did come out in reverse. And, and, and what that was saying to me is that, you know, some of us don't feel comfortable in this leadership role, we don't feel like it's the right thing to do. We don't feel like we even belong there. Or we should we be there. But yes, absolutely. The angels are coming through and saying you are meant to be exactly where you are. You are meant to be in this leadership role. Take comfort in that and understand that we are always with you. Trying to comfort you, trying to help you to understand that everything is going well. All is meant, all is as it is meant to be. Okay. Beautiful. Sorry, just had to drink a little water there. So I want to talk about security here. All right, and keep in mind, this is still, this is a collective message. So this is for both the divine masculine and the divine feminine here. And next, once we get through this part, we're going to break it up and we're going to go, we're going to start with the divine feminine. But for security, I want to see what security means here. Now, I do feel like there could be a lot of attacks um, you could be feeling like you're under psychic attack. I'm hearing narcissistic abuse. Some of you may be awakening to the narcissism around you. And this is not just from your counterpart. This is also from friends, family members, and colleagues and stuff like that. Um, there is an extra level, an extra layer of protection. I feel that is being brought to the twin flame collective right now because of the fact that we do have this new beginning energy for us. Okay. And with that, I, I feel like there's a deep, strong sense of power that is being accepted and integrated into our lives on an individual basis, whether you're with your counterpart or not. And that has a lot to do with this new beginning here. That is, that is the new beginning to be quite honest. Um, and 
because of that, it's going to make us even more of a beacon, even more of a target to energies that want to stop us, that want to keep us from coming into union um, and, and, and just stop us in our tracks from spreading this unconditional loving energy, right? So there is extra security coming through for us here. The, the, the universe and the angels are trying to assure us that we are in fact safe. We are cared for here, okay? One last shuffle, and then we're going to look deeper into this security energy. All right. What is this security here for the Twin Flame Collective? Yes, indeed. All right. All right. Yep. That's exactly. Wow. <laughs> Wowie, wow, wow. Okay, overall energy is the Ten of Wands. Now, I, I, I totally understand this because the Ten of Wands is coming through and, and is, is expressing the duties that we have as the Twin Flame Collective, okay? This is a lot of work. It's a lot on our shoulders. It's, it can be quite burdensome, especially just the dynamic between the twins, the energetic connection between the twins. It is a lot to carry. It's a lot to hold. It's a lot, a huge burden to bear a lot of the time. So with that said, security is here to say that, you know, we have the security that we need. Now, what has come out here? <laughs> the Queen of Wands, look at that. The Queen of Wands, Justice, Four of Pentacles, but then also exactly what I was saying, the Five of Wands, all right? This is a conflict. In, in a, uh, this is inner conflict, N not so much. Yes, there could be inner conflict, but I feel like for a lot of us, the inner conflict that we feel is a direct result of the external conflict that we feel because here, here we are. And whether you're on, whether you find yourself to be on the masculine side or, on the, or the feminine side, it really doesn't matter. This queen of wands energy is powerful, is strong, is magnetic, is magical. As a reader, I see her as the physical embodiment of the law of attraction. So I really do feel like, especially with justice here, a lot of us in the collective are fully starting to step into our power, are really starting to consciously embrace our power. That's what I'm hearing. And thus great justice is being brought into our lives. Okay, and so with that said, then you do have the five of wands here, which is the energy of competition and others starting to recognize this within us, within us, within you or whatever, and wanting to compete, wanting to hold us back, wanting to hold us down. But with the four of pentacles here, what I heard was hold your center. And that is a card in one of the Oracle decks that I use. It might be the light worker oracle, but that talks about grounding yourself and keeping yourself steady, stable, and secure and fortified is what I'm hearing. Fortifying yourself is necessary here, but you have that security. You have that fortification. You already have that foundation within yourself, which is allowing you to step into this new level of embodying your own magical power, even we can say, which is bringing justice into your life. But also you have that extra security from the universe, from the God, from God's source creator, the angels, whom your, the Orishas, your, your spirit guides, your ancestors, whomever, and it could be all of them. You know what I mean? Even the ones that you're not necessarily aware of, but you have that fortification, okay? All right, that's cool. Oh, oh, and what I wanna say also, underneath the 10 of wands is the queen of swords. So you have the queen of wands and the queen of swords and the page of pentacles. Yeah, that makes sense. Yep, uh, the page of pentacles is also talking about the new beginning. Yes. Um, now, for some of us here, this new beginning is shedding a lot of the burdens from your life especially with this queen of swords energy, okay? Um, and I'm, I, I'm kind of picking up that a lot of that could have to do with the twin flame journey. So maybe between the counterparts, there's a lot of shedding of the old burdens, which is leading to a new beginning, page of pentacles and this new beginning here. Oh, and then under new beginning, you do have purification, all right, so yeah, there's definitely an energy of starting over, starting fresh, starting new, making a name for yourself, making changes, following your path. Some of you, is, yeah, especially with this Queen of Wands and, the, and Justice energy, some of you, mainly on the feminine side, I guess, um, are really stepping into a new sense of power, a new sense of self, a new sense of understanding of who you are, where you're meant to be, where you're meant to be going, or where you want to be going, any, like, anything like that. We're gonna get into the feminine collective Next, but um, yeah. 
sorry, I'm trying to figure out what I want to do here. Okay, all right, cool. So, okay, that's cool. That makes a lot of sense. So I want to look at security here. I'm not security, forgiveness this time. All right, what is this forgiveness for the Twin Flame Collective here? Now, I'm hearing the divine masculine counterpart. There is definitely a need to, for, to hold or to be forgiving of the masculine for whatever you perceive him or her to have done to you, okay? It, it really doesn't matter. But also keep in mind that forgiveness is more for yourself than, oh geez, than it is for them. In any situation. Okay. At the root of the situation, or I'm sorry, at the, the bottom of the deck, we do have the Three of Cups, and that's giving me a community energy. And the message that I'm getting from the Three of Cups is that we need to understand, regardless of whatever has happened, okay? And no one is saying that you're not allowed to hold your boundaries. Hold strong boundaries if you need to. But what I'm getting from this is we're all in this together. And that song from... Um, <laughs> what is it high school musical is playing in my head <laughs> but literally that's what that we need to remember that we are a community okay and we need to love ourselves we need to love another just as much as we love ourselves so even if i mean whatever re re reverse the roles maybe it's the masculine that needs to walk away from the feminine counterpart because she's the more toxic he or she is the more toxic one who knows i don't care it doesn't matter regardless of whatever has happened between the two of you between the counterparts you need to understand that we're yes we're on this journey together but we're also on this journey individually and we all have our set goals and our set experiences that we need to go through first before union can happen if you're even looking for union anymore you know what i mean it's more about the union of the self really than it is about the union within okay um right okay so what i'm getting okay so we have strength in reverse here um and that, yeah, that is an overall energy. But strength is in reverse in terms of not forgiving, not being forgiving. It takes a, 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 a decent amount of strength to really be able to inner strength, taming of the ego, the aha, there it is. The reason why this, the strength is in reverse because the ego needs to be tamed. I just heard set in the back seat, not even riding co-pilot not even riding the passenger like the the you know no back seat to the back with you we've had enough of the ego trying to run the show here okay the ego is not running the show and that's where this unforgiveness for the most part is coming from on both sides both the feminine and the masculine and i'm not going to sit here and preach like i'm above that i'm a part of the collective here okay i understand where that's coming from but here we have the Five of Cups, the Six of Swords, the Nine of Swords, and the Empress. And as I was looking at this part of the message here, I heard walking away. There is definitely an energy of walking away from something that was negative, something that was toxic, moving on. You could even be moving to a whole other environment. Um, but part of, uh, some of us, okay, some of us, if you are really truly moving on, with the Six of Swords, I feel like for the most part, you're moving forward with a completely open or a completely clean slate, or at least your intentions are to move forward with a completely clean slate. And there's anxiety here because of that. For some of you, the anxiety is because you don't want your counterpart to come back. For others of you, you're anxious because you feel like you've completely lost or lost out in the situation. You've missed out on an opportunity and you're never going to see your counterpart again. But then there's the Empress. And the Empress, yes, could represent the divine feminine counterpart. But here I'm, I'm picking up the nurturing aspect of the, the, the empress. This is more of an environmental energy, okay? The, this is what I feel like is happening here is if there is a, an intense separation and even deeper separation that's happening between the, 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 the twins, the individual counterparts, even deeper than it may have, ha it may have been in the past or in the recent past, um, it's, it's happening so that true healing and forgiveness can come forward. True healing of the connection and the individuals in that connection. So it's, it's like, it's twofold. It's the individuals themselves, but then the connection between the individuals. There's a deep sense of healing. And I'm feeling gestation with the queen, with, with, uh, with the empress energy. Like it's about to, get, like in order to give birth to new elements in this 
relationship in this dynamic, okay? And then we have the moon, the four of swords, the high priestess, and the ace of swords. So this is kind of encouraging, especially as you go into this kind of like hibernation or this cocooning or um, um, gestation phase, I guess you can call it, with the empress energy. You're really being guided or counseled to meditate, meditate and and help yourself reveal or allow the universe to help you reveal what was hidden for you in this situation so that you can have a deeper understanding ace of swords for some of you this understanding is how i just heard why the divine masculine counterpart did the things that they did and why the feminine may have done the things that they've done. So you can either see it as you're looking at the external representation of these energies and coming to an understanding of why things happened the way they did, or you're looking at it from your own point of view or saying and understanding your own challenges and why you made the choices you made or why you reacted in the ways that you did. Okay? All in service of forgiveness here, guys. Yeah? Okay, a closing message for the collective. Activations, yes. And then we're gonna get into the divine feminine side of the equation first, yes? All right. So let's see, let's get some activation energies for the collective here as a whole. All right. Let's see what we've got. For the Twin Flame Collective, Divine Feminine and Divine Mask. Oh, look at that. Okay. We're going to get one more card. Okay. Oh, geez. <laughs> that really is a lot, you guys. All right, I'm going to take them. Overall energy, wow, we have card number seven, realization. The frequency of realization supports the internal process of becoming aware of our heart-centered truth, as well as the external process of becoming our highest expression in this world. I mean, yes. That's kind of, I even want to say that is a, a cornerstone to this journey as a whole. We've got so many cards here that have come out. The first card that came out, though, was Divine Feminine. The frequency of Divine Feminine supports our receptive, nurturing, and soft side, allowing it to express itself openly and helping us to connect to our intrinsic understanding of our connection to all of creation. And I really do feel like why this came out is because the Divine Feminine energy is really strongly on the rise. And that's why I feel like many of us in the Divine Feminine Collective are really starting to to, to find our power or to utilize our power in some brand new ways, which is bringing, definitely bringing new beginnings for us. But then on the masculine side, for those of you that I, I feel as the, the divine feminine power is, and energy is getting stronger and stronger and rising higher and higher, it's taking shape in your life too. And I'm kind of feeling that could be causing an uproar where again, we're going to get into your energy, divine masculine, and we're going to get into the divine feminine. But a lot of, uh, wow, I just get this strong energy that the divine feminine is really moving up in the world, I guess you could say, and it's having a strong effect. And actually, it is, in fact, pulling the twins apart in some cases and kind of sending some of us into a deeper form of separation because the divine feminine is really stepping into her power and the divine masculine is having to come to terms like there, there i really feel like there are a lot of things that are popping up for the divine masculine in, in his or her life that are causing them to have to face some of the ways that they may have disrespected feminine power and femininity and maybe even their own inner femininity okay we have coherence here card number 13 the frequency of a coherence supports our ability to harmonize the frequency of the heart with the frequency of the mind for an optimal ability to create the reality that we desire so to me this is an energy of come of uh, channeling and, and combining and balancing the dynamic, which is the next card here, uh, between the masculine and the feminine, the masculine being the mind, the feminine being the heart, 
Okay. So with dynamic here, we say the frequency of dynamic supports our ability to harmonize between layers and aspects of different origin and frequency. It helps us to put together a reality that is made up of many different elements, both familiar and completely new with ease, grace, and great joy. Yeah, that's beautiful. All right, moving forward, we have transition, card number 43. The frequency of transition supports our deep understanding of the ever-changing nature of existence and our lives so that we can learn to let go, surrender to the process, and allow transition to occur with ease and grace. Lots of ease and grace coming through here, yes? We have the crown chakra, we have delight, and then we also have allowance. Higher wisdom, higher understanding with the sh crown chakra, the frequency of the crown chakra, the violet flower of life, supports our spiritual connection to the universe and our ability to transmute negative energy into light. I feel like this card here is directly connected to the, the energies of forgiveness and of taming the ego here that are necessary because there's this higher wisdom, because we're going through this transition, because we're balancing and working on really balancing this dynamic and bringing coherence into our lives. Our crown chakras might be really activated right now. You might be getting a really, a lots of downloads. You might be um, finding yourself coming to understandings of things that you didn't have before. Okay. Card number 19, which is delight. The frequency of delight supports our capacity to create and experience feelings of intense joy and happiness. The more delight we feel, the more delight we invoke <clears throat> in others. So really try and have fun with whatever it is you're going through, even if it's pretty extreme. Try and find the lightness in it. Or if you need to just take some time to really allow yourself to have fun, allow yourself to feel good, allow yourself to find some enjoyment in life, please, please do so because that's going to help you make this transition even easier. Okay. And finally, we have allowance. The frequency of allowance invites us to be open to whatever comes our way without judgment, without opinion, without fear, and without resistance. When we allow, the universe becomes our partner in the wondrous dance of existence and expression. This is a massive, massive suggestion from spirit. The more you can allow things to happen the way they are naturally going to happen, the easier a time you are going to have with this. All right? So that was the collective. That was the whole collective. That were the, those were the messages for the whole collective. Give me just a second here. I'm going to clean up and then we're going to get into the divine feminine first. Yes? So give me just a second. And what I want to do for that is I want to start with the energy oracle cards and I want to look into... What the story is for the Divine Feminine Collective right now, what she needs to know, what's going on in her environment. Now, keep in mind, I am saying her, and when I do talk about, speak of the Divine Masculine, I'm going to be saying him. I am not in any way referring to gender. This is energy, okay? We all have masculine and feminine energies within us. Yes? All right, kids. So for the Divine Feminine Collective... Three shuffles here. What is going on for the Divine Feminine Collective? What is in your storyline here? Last shuffle for the Divine Feminine. Here we go. For the Divine Feminine. What's going on with the Divine Feminine? Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, wow. I thought so. Goddess of the moon. Okay. Oh, man holding a heart. Oh my. Hostilities. Healer of the ages. Door to personal happiness. I want to get one more card. Yeah, ooh, look. Oh, you know what? Okay. All right. We have caring connections at the bottom of the deck. Um, spirit is telling me to leave it there. We're going to pull one more card for the divine feminine. There it is. Contract. Yikes. Financial constraints is at the bottom of the deck. All right. So check it out. Divine feminine. For some of you, the connection between you and your divine masculine counterpart is ha absolutely heavily, ooh, chow, heavily influenced by these, uh, financial constraints. But let me tell you something. 
What I really feel is happening for the Divine Feminine Collective is you are in fact rising in your power. And as you rise in your power, you rise in finances. Queen, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the woman holding a coin. I also, I was just about to say the Queen of Pentacles energy. Some of the Divine Masculine Collective is pissed off that you are making more money than him or her or that you are more financially successful than him or her or just successful in whatever you are doing. Now, here's the thing, though. For the Divine Feminine, okay, I'll get to that in a second. For the Divine Feminine, if you're really finding a lot of success right now in whatever it is you're doing, it's because you're in alignment with yourself, with your true self. It's, I'm hearing it's because you're on your path. And anybody with these hostilities here, because it's not just coming from the Divine Masculine, but it's also coming from other people around you. I'm picking up on that Five of Wands energy. So that takes us back to the collective energy. Um, Basically, they don't want to see you winning. They don't want to see you shining. And so they're either they're going to send energetic daggers at you is what I'm hearing, or they're, some people might actively try to sabotage you, okay? But you have here door to personal happiness and healing. So by following your intuition with goddess of the moon here, standing in your power and, and following your leadership, I am kind of seeing this as a leadership card, the healer of the ages, but a lot of us in the Divine Feminine Collective are very much healers. Divine Masculine too, but for the most part, the masculine has to step into his or her power in that sense, but we'll get into that. We'll get into the masculine side in a second. Um, but honestly, Divine Feminine, what I feel like is happening here for you is you're really... Well, first of all, you're holding up your end of the contract. That's for sure. But if your counterpart isn't necessarily doing that, at least not right now, then there is a shift. Then there is, is a change because you do have man holding a heart here. And I do feel like there's someone that's about to come into your life. And that was someone that I was, something that I was picking up on in the collective side of this reading. I just didn't want to mention it at that point because I wanted to see if it was going to come up here. And I do, in fact, feel like it is coming up here. But it's someone that's not necessarily going to be jealous or hostile of the fact that you're making your move you're making moves okay you're doing what you need to do for yourself all right for others of you this isn't necessarily that you're really all that successful in business maybe not just yet but with this with this woman holding a coin or i am picking i kind of want to keep saying this is the queen of pentacles energy it's like you're taking the steps that you need to do to better your life regardless of whether your your divine counterpart your divine masculine is a part of your life or not and absolutely without any sort of energy of requiring their approval or getting any sort of like feedback on it. Like it's not even, you're not even really considering them in this situation. You're solely doing what is right for you in order so that you can, I'm hearing, complete your mission or continue on your mission or just better your life, better your quality of life or, or, or whatever. I mean, this is definitely an energy of knowing your worth and not allowing anyone to put you down because of it. Underneath the woman holding a coin, you do have adjacent possibilities. So that's kind of giving me an energy of, you guys, you never really know how any of this can work out. Even though there could be another a soulmate coming into your life here with this man holding a coin, and that could be creating some hostility maybe between you and your counterpart, or you're having an issue with that. Um, you never know what that could lead to. You never know how things are going to turn up. And you never know. And, and a lot of the time, soulmates or, or I guess karmic partners in some cases come into our lives in order to teach us or prepare us to have this bond with our twins. Okay? I want to get into the tarot here. And I want to start clarifying. So for the Divine Feminine Collective, first thing I want to clarify is hostilities, of course. That, just, that card just keeps coming up, you guys. It's insane. But I feel like, I really feel like this is conflict between the masculine and the feminine. And you know what's crazy? On my way here, I'm currently in Puerto Rico, and on my way here, I watched some of um, A Star is Born, which is a movie that I never saw. And I'm a huge Lady Gaga fan, but I'm also not one to really watch movies. And now, on, in hindsight, one of my best friends who saw it, she was like, Eric, don't see it. Trust me, you just you don't want to see it. <laughs> and if you haven't seen it, I'm not going to give it, I'm not going to give away the plot, but, or, or I'm not going to try and spoil anything, but, well, I am kind of getting, kind of giving the plot away a little bit, but basically, um, it's Bradley Cooper and, and, and Lady Gaga, they end up having a relationship, and 
Bradley Cooper's character is extremely jealous, ends up becoming very, very jealous of Lady Gaga's character. And that's kind of what I'm feeling here. I'm feeling like there's fighting between the twins right now, or at least the divine masculine and divine feminine counterparts, because it, and now, it, it, keep in mind, guys, this is a general reading. This isn't going to resonate for everybody. And I feel like this is happening on an energetic level because the feminine is on the rise and the masculine doesn't know how to handle it, doesn't know what to do about it, is getting kind of jealous of it, mainly because we haven't really broken free from this patriarchal, twisted, masculinely oriented society. And they don't know what to do with strong, successful women or feminine energies. Especially when you're winning or succeeding by not being sneaky, sly, and all that. While you're staying in your integrity, while you're staying in your up on the, on the up and up, you know what I mean. That really pisses people off. That really that really is like I, I don't understand. This isn't supposed to work this way. Well, actually, it is supposed to work this way. So hostilities for the divine feminine. What is this hostilities here? Okay, yeah. Oh wow. Wowie, wow, wow. Over, ooh, wee. All right, overall energy. You have the Page of Swords. You have the Page of Swords, and then you have the Three of Swords that wanted to come out too. All right, and I'm hearing the Divine Masculine is watching you, is watching you succeed, is watching you grow. You have death with the Seven of Wands and the Magician. <sighs> Well, I'm just going to call it like it is, y'all. Death is the transformation, is the change. Oh, and I forgot to mention this, but today I've been seeing butterflies everywhere. And I've been here for a week now, and I haven't seen... Chloe and I went out to the beach. We walked over to a beach, and I'm, if you don't know, I'm staying with my friend Chloe. And um, we walked to this beach once before. We actually, the first time we did it, we took a four-mile hike from where Chloe is to, like, the plaza. In, in, I'm in Rincon, Yes. Uh, Puerto Rico. And so we walked that route once and we, I didn't remember, I mean, there were no butterflies. I maybe saw one or two. Today, butterflies everywhere. All right. Transformation, death, putting an end to the old cycle, right? Putting up boundaries and walls. This is, we're talking about the divine feminine collective right now. And thus manifesting being, being the master manifester, being control of your, being in control of your life. And what I'm getting with this magician energy, it's very similar to the, the emperor, but not exactly because you're in manifestation mode and you're very consciously aware of what is coming in and out of your life. And if it is not in alignment with what you are trying to manifest here, again, regardless of what the divine masculine has to say about it, but if it is not in alignment with what is, what you are trying to manifest, then it is not allowed in. Seven of Wands. And that takes us to contract. Because many, of, uh, many on the Divine Masculine side are kind of starting to freak out about the fact that, yeah, we had this contract and you, and you kind of thought, you kind of thought that, um, well, we're bound together. She or he is always going to be there for me. But mm, actually, what you forgot divine masculine, at least what you forgot about the feminine or whatever, what you forgot is there is a clause within that contract that says you are not to allow treatment other than what it is you know you're divinely deserving of. And that goes for both sides, divine feminine and divine masculine. But the divine masculine has been the one, for the most part, that has been manipulating this or has forgotten about this. And the divine feminine, it's like the divine feminine has realized it, remembered it, found it, highlighted it, and is now living from it. Whoa. Okay. So let's look at this man holding a heart energy. Yep. For the Divine Feminine Collective. What is this man holding a heart energy for the Divine Feminine? Oh, boy. The King of Swords. Um, 
and the, yeah, the 10 of pentacles. Okay, so what I'm hearing is the divine feminine is allowing a new person to enter his or her life. Now, this is the king of swords, yes. It is masculine energy, yes, but this is still the divine feminine's energy. And what's happening here is, <laughs> just like this clause that we were talking about in the contract, it's like she's saying to herself, all right, well, look, let's put it all out on the table. Let's see things for what it truly is. I know, I, I know what I'm worthy of. I know what I'm deserving of. I know I want love. I know I want affection. I know I want to be honored. I know I want a family in some cases is what I'm hearing. So let's put this situation to rest because if it's not giving me the things that I need, if it's not providing me with what I know I'm worthy of, if it's toxic, if it's narcissistic, what not, whatever, then it's time, woo, y'all, it is time to close out the cycle, 10 of pentacles, learning the lesson, walking away with the eight of cups, queen of wands. Woo -hoo, woo -hoo, woo -hoo. I mean, like taking all of her motherfucking power back. And then we have strength underneath that four of wands underneath that page of pentacles. Uh, oh my God. Justice. Hey, but then there's that five of cups and then the ace of cups flashed me. That five of cups is on the, I guess is on the masculine side. There could be some of that on the feminine side too, but this really is the feminine having learned the lesson of not allowing her counterpart to treat her like shit just because it's her counterpart. It's really all there is to it. It's that clause. It's that, it's that, I don't even know if I'm using the right word, but hey, whatever. And so now that is opening up, that is allowing someone who is truly uh, worthy of her, I guess you could say, uh, wants to actually love and have this caring, love her and have this caring connection, which was at the bottom of the deck when this came out. It's opening that up. Now, feminine, keep in mind that by you doing that, you're, facilitate, you're facilitating the opening of your masculine counterpart's heart here. So you are inadvertently helping the divine masculine get in touch, get in centered with, in centered, get in touch with his heart chakra. And it's going to lead, for some of you, it's going to lead to relationships that are going to help you put a lot of your issues to rest, a lot, uh, help you grow and change and expand so that you can eventually come together with your counterpart off into the future. Okay? I'm curious. I'm curious. I'm going to go with the um, Romance Angels. I could be opening a whole can of worms here, but you know what? Why not? And I want to look at this man holding a heart energy. For some of you, this is a situation in which you're really going to be focused on your pentacles, on your work, on your business, and someone is just going to gravitate towards you. And before you know it, you've got a suitor. Whoa. All right. So let's look at this man holding a heart. Okay, we have at the bottom of the deck, heart-to-heart -heart conversations. But then we also have worth waiting for and true love. I mean, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Chloe's sitting over here like dying laughing. I mean, it is, it's worth, it's absolutely worth waiting. True love is always worth waiting for, whether it's with your divine counterpart or not, okay? I'm going to leave it there. I do feel like with this heart to heart conversations here. Yeah, this is definitely a soulmate <laughs> because you have past life relationship. And then what do you have right underneath that? As I'm saying that calling in your soulmate, but this is going to be a call. This is going to be a soulmate. You guys that yes, you're going to have, you've, you've had a history with, okay, sure. So it might be a very quick thing where you feel like you really know each other or very, very quickly, or, you know, it doesn't take long for you guys to feel very comfortable with each other, but this is most likely going to be a relationship that's going to help you with the whole forgiving and learning aspect of your connection with your divine counterpart. And it's, I, I really do feel like guys, that is the strongest thing that is driving or driving this wedge further and further and further well, deeper between the twins is because there's this element of needing to forgive. And some of us are needing to manifest relationships in so, so that we can 
forgive and learn about the learn and learn some things. It's the, it's the learning that's coming through here strongly. Um, learn some things surrounding that so that we can in fact forgive and then eventually gravitate or move closer together. Last thing I want to look at is door to personal healing and happiness for the divine feminine. So what is that? Please spirit. Ooh. The queen of pentacles. Knowing your worth, six of pentacles is underneath that. I mean, this is beautiful. When you hold your boundaries, when you manifest from a place of knowing exactly what it is that you are worthy of and not accepting anything less, that is when you facilitate this door to personal healing and happiness. That is when you facilitate and ground your energy enough so that you can receive personal ha healing and happiness. Oh, wow. Okay, so we have the Six of Pentacles at the bottom of the deck. Underneath that is the Tower and the Nine of Cups. <laughs> the Nine of Pentacles, I mean, and the Knight of Cups. This is definitely a... <sighs> what I'm hearing here, guys, is this is a Tower moment, a strong, strong Tower moment for the Divine Masculine Collective. And I know that we're talking about the Feminine right now, but the Feminine is standing in her power. She is not giving up. She is not giving in. And it's making it very, very difficult for the masculine to keep up. It's, and I'm, just, I'm just spewing what I'm hearing. And it's not that it's difficult for the masculine to keep up in the sense that they are not capable of it. It's just that for whomever I'm channeling for in, in this collective, in the Divine Feminine, your counterpart is still operating from the old programming and needs to break free from it. And for you, Divine Feminine, you are well aware of that programming and you have absolutely broken free from it, consciously at least. Some of you I'm picking up, you're still kind of trying to play in that energy too, even though you're well aware that it's not necessary or it's not something you need to be engaging in any longer. Others of you have fully stepped out of that. Um, and what I'm, why I'm holding this up here, King of Swords and the Ten of Pentacles, it is your responsibility, Divine Feminine, to close this cycle out for yourself. No one else is going to do it for you. Sure, the universe may come in and bring some tower moments into your life, 5151 on the counter, um, in order for you to really settle into this queen of pentacles energy and understand your true worth. But ultimately, you have got to make the objective decision with this king of swords energy. You've got to look at the situation and say, what is, what is the situation? What is the current state between me and my divine masculine counterpart? And if it's anything less than ideal, it is, if it is anything less, well, take that with a grain of salt. Um, I, there's a better way to say that. Uh, if it is, spirit wants to say less than ideal. Within reason, all right? Be reasonable here, yes? Um, but if it's, okay, if it's toxic, if it's, if, it's, if it's abusive in any way, whatnot, if it's narcissistic in any way, if it's, or at least it's not providing you with what you know you deserve and you're worthy of, then you have to make the objective decision to close out the cycle. Put an end to it yourself and walk away and move towards... Move towards whatever, it, I'm trying to find whatever, I'm trying to find it, but move towards whatever would be the energy that would allow that to happen in your life, that would facilitate that showing up in your life, okay? And that is how you facilitate this healer of the ages because when you do that, you influence others. You're, all, you're definitely influencing your divine masculine counterpart by basically giving them an ultimatum, Okay? Okay. Closing Oracle Guidance for the Divine Feminine. Yeah, we're gonna do the Sacred Rebels. And then we're gonna get into the Masculine, yes? So bear with me. This is probably going to be an hour and a half long video because I kind of want to spend, I spent about a half an hour on the collective. I spent a half an hour with the feminine. I want to spend a half an hour with the masculine. If necessary, if need be. 
Okay? So here we go. One last shuffle and then closing oracle guidance for the Divine Feminine Collective. Here we go. There it is right there. Yeah, that is beautiful. And it is right on point, y'all. Card number five, which is a number of change. Follow your own rhythm. It's exactly what the feminine counterpart is doing right now. Deep within, you are moved by an ancient, powerful force that cannot be tamed. It is the rising pulse of your connection to the life force. You feel it in your bones, in your blood, in your heart, and in your belly. When there is something dying within, you sense it falling away, no longer needed. You sense when it is time to rest and be patiently in transition. You feel the stirring of agitation and restlessness when new life calls you to create, to act, to step forward, and to take a risk. You know that you march to your own beat, that no one else can tell you what your inner rhythms are, and that you must trust in your own timing. You cannot be rushed or forced, nor can you be held back when it is time to burst forth. Life celebrates and supports the natural rise and fall of your inner rhythms. This oracle brings you the special message that you cannot miss what you are destined for, nor will you gain anything by trying to push yourself. Trust in the life cycles within, and you will feel the perfect balance between effort and surrender, discipline and letting go. When it is time for the rhythm of rest, you will feel a natural slowing within and be drawn into contemplation and environments that are more gentle, spacious and nourishing, and perhaps more peaceful. When the rhythm of play beats in your heart, you will reach out to others to connect, dance, converse, sing, make music, make love and share your wildness. You will be drawn to uplifting groups and places where you can experience a positive energetic exchange. Your needs will be met in harmony with your own rhythms. All that you will miss out on by trusting this is anxiety. What you will gain is peace. Um, no. Okay. Okay, I'm going to actually leave it there. So there you have it, feminine. That's really quite beautiful. Stay in your own power. Stay, uh, I want to say stay in your own lane. Do, it, do what it is that you do. Make yourself happy. Allow yourself to be happy. All right? What I'm hearing, oh, for some of you, there is a, def, there's a, there's a, there is, wait, actually, you know what? Don't put this away, Eric, because you're going to use it for the masculine. Okay. Um, but there is a sh very strong message that just came through. You don't have to give this counterpart all of your time, effort, and energy. Especially especially if they're not reciprocating. Yikes. Like, no, honey. No. <laughs> All right? Just because you're, they're your divine counterpart, it doesn't mean that you absolutely have to be sending them energy. You absolutely have to be helping them heal. Like, allow your counterpart to do whatever it is they need to do on their own time, in their own space. And that goes the same for the masculine too, okay? You don't have to be sending your feminine all this energy and whatnot, whatever, but it's usually the feminine that does that, right? That's a specific message that really wants to come through. Um, it's actually better that you, yes, hold your divine masculine in a space of unconditional love, sure, but you don't have, it, it's really not advised to really be sending them any type, types of like healing energy or whatnot whatever, because ultimately that's really, in a lot of cases, that's just enabling them to stay where they are. You need, I'm hearing, you need to allow them to break free on their own. Just like you broke free on your own, right? All right, kids. So next, last, but certainly not least, Divine Masculine, it's your turn. Let me just shuffle this one more time and then we'll see what we've got for you, okay, Divine Masculine? I mean, I, I do want to say it's not all doom and gloom for you, Divine Masculine. It's just an energy of, and you know what? You have a pretty unique, well, we are all having to break free of this patriarchal energy, 58, 58 on the counter. But you, Divine Masculine, are heavily ingrained in it. So that's why it kind of seems like 
or feels like, or maybe is in some cases, harder for you to make this switch because of how our world works. And if it were the, if like, if it were the other side, if we were on the flip side of the coin and it was a feminine, more femininely dominant world, feminine, femininely dominant world, and it was twisted and, and, and whatnot, whatever like it is now, it would be harder for the feminine to break free. So masculine, you are really like this leadership energy that came out for in the beginning of the reading is, I mean, so strong for you because you really have to be a leader. You have to stand out from the crowd and you have to go against the destruction, the negativity, the narcissism, the toxicity. You have to stand as a beacon, put yourself out there and be the antithesis of all of that. And I, I will say it's getting easier because there are more and more of, there are more and more men or, and or masculine energies that are coming forward and are actively working towards this. But it's still, I'm hearing, it's still heavily ingrained in the collective. So yeah, it's gonna be a doozy to work out. All right, Divine Masculine Collective. One last shuffle. And then we'll see what we've got for you. What is in your storyline right now? For the Divine Masculine Collective. Divine Masculine. Woo! Mm. Okay. Wow, okay. Two more cards, please, Spirit. Wow. One more, please, Spirit, for the Divine Masculine Collective. Oh, actually, you got two more. Okay. All right. Overall energy is the Magician in the Mirror. And you know, the first thing that's coming through, this is very much the Magician card, and this is your overall energy right now. And Spirit really wants to remind you of just how powerful you are. You are not at the mercy of those who just seek to control you. You have the power, the wisdom, and the authority to break free of your chains. I'm gonna do it this way. First of all, you have a lot of angelic energy here for you. You have seventh chakra, Archangel Uriel. You also have the fifth chakra, Archangel Shamuel, and you have fourth chakra, Archangel Raphael, all right? So these are all higher centers. The only one we don't have is the sixth chakra for you, but that's okay. You're not ready to open your eye yet. What you're going through right now, and, and or at least maybe you, um, I heard some of you are not ready to open your third eye yet. Okay, you're still working. A lot of you are still working on this heart chakra energy, opening up, your, opening up your heart. But then the biggest thing, and this has been coming through for the Divine Masculine Collective for the longest time, expressing yourself and authenticity. Now, for some of you, as you have, as you know, you have this energy of the heart chakra being opened up and whatnot, whatever, you're Divine feminine energy is also on the rise, which is influencing you to express yourself because the feminine is very much about authenticity, truth, honesty, that kind of thing. Even be like being a trailblazer too, but that's more because of the cardinal energy of the feminine, but we don't have, that, that's a, a topic for another discussion. Um, underneath all of that, you have appreciation. And what I'm hearing is for a lot of you divine masculines, the reason why your divine feminine has walked away from you probably in such a strong way this time is because of a lack of appreciation. I mean, come on. She had that queen of pentacles energy coming out. She had it twice. She had the woman holding a coin, which I was seeing as I'm saying was the queen of pentacles. And then it, with clarifying the door to personal healing and happiness was none other than the queen of pentacles, knowing her worth. Lack of appreciation has gotten you, where, gotten you guys where you are in this connection. But don't worry about it. Don't be too hard on yourself because ultimately everything happens for a reason. You are needing to experience this so that you can learn the lesson. But it's very much an energy, just like Joni Mitchell said, don't it always seem to go that you don't know what you got till it's gone. Many of us had to lose something in order to see, to gain the wisdom 
and understand the worth. We have patience. We also have strategy and broken heart. Now, patience, this, I, I'm feeling very strongly that this is mainly a message for the Divine Feminine Collective, to have patience with the Divine Masculine. And I will be completely honest, in the very beginning of my situation, I heard very, very clearly, be patient with him. I mean, that was one of the clearest messages I had heard in all of that time. But also, be patient with yourselves. And Divine Masculine, you have got to be patient with yourself as well. For some of you, Divine Masculine, what I'm picking up here is that you need to have patience with the universe and yourself in breaking free or removing yourself from some of the situations that you've been working on removing yourselves from. Some of you just want to do it like right now. Let's get this over with. And it's not necessarily because you want to be with your divine feminine counterpart. For the most part, it's just because you're, you're tired, you're sick and tired of being in whatever energy you're in right now. So you just, want it to, you just want to get out of it as soon as possible, like yesterday, but you have to be patient. All right? Divine timing is at play here. Now, broken heart is here, but that's what Archangel Raphael is helping you heal. And what Archangel Uriel is bringing with the seventh chakra of your crown chakra or higher wisdom is an understanding of how to mend your heart. And I'm hearing an understanding of how to feel, the, the necessity of allowing yourself to feel, allowing yourself to feel your emotions, allowing yourself to be emotional, allowing yourself to be sensitive. Yes? Strategy is kind of throwing me for a little bit of a loop here. Oh, wait, before I go any further, though, for the Divine Masculine Collective, this broken heart also can have a lot to do with your feminine walking away from you. Because I feel like if there has been another wave of the feminine walking away, if that resonates with your situation, I'm hearing the cycle is over. So this is like do or die at this point. If you do want this person in your life, you're going to have to make some massive changes to your life and that's heartbreaking for a lot of you because like games it, it's like the game is over no more games and that came through with the last reading that i did for the collective i had a channeled message in which the feminine is not playing this is not a game anymore this is not a game to her to be honest it was never a game and yet we treated it like, we, we did, we, both of us, masculine and feminine, we treated it like a game. But the feminine has gotten to the point now where it's like, no, all, all bets are off. And I know we said this in the past, but I guess we're really saying it now. Either you come correct or you don't come at all. And the feminine has gotten to the point where it's like, no, literally, don't even show up. Like, I don't want to see you. If you're not going to come correct, if you're not going to get your shit straight, if you're not going to handle this and take this seriously, if you're not going to take this seriously, and I'm being quite honest with you, I don't care if I ever see you again. And I'm not saying that from a hostile point of view. The feminine is not saying that from a hostile point of view. She's not. She's being very serious because she knows her worth. She's in alignment with her worth and she's ready to receive it from wherever the, wherever the universe aligns it from. And if it's you, if it's the divine masculine, that's great. <laughs> in many cases, that's ideal. But in other cases, if it's not you, well, whatever. If it's not you, though, she's okay with it. She's very okay with it. Because she is sick and tired of playing this game. You play too much. And so that's leading to a broken heart. Big time. But... Here are the archangels, especially Archangel Michael, helping you heal that, helping you mend that. So now, after speaking through all of that, right, now I kind of understand what the strategy energy is. So very, and I mean, that's very much you, Divine Masculine. That is very much you, strategic. How am I going to make this work? How am I going to do this? Well, for starters, what I can tell you is the first thing you need to do is learn how is work on mending this broken heart because it's this broken heart that you've been living with and living from that has helped create this damage between the relationship to begin with. But keep in mind, guys, everything happens for a reason. 
So don't beat yourself up too much. Whatever is happening in your connection is necessary so that you can learn the lessons that you're destined to learn in this lifetime, that you are meant to learn in this lifetime, that you've come down to learn in this lifetime. All right? Don't beat yourself up. And with this magician and the, oh, damn. I was wondering if this card was going to show up for you. Deceit. And then we have the second chakra, Archangel Ariel. Uh, but anyway, this magician in the mirror energy is saying, you have the power to do this. You have the power to make these changes. You have the power, the power to heal your broken heart and to live from a more unconditionally loving energy. But I'm hearing some of you are denying yourselves that power. But that's the first part of this strategy. Getting your shit together, as they say, right? All right, I want to get into some clarification now. I want, to help, I want to help some of you understand this appreciation energy a little bit more. And then I also want to get, pull from the Oracle of the Angels for you, Divine Masculine, to see what other messages all this angelic energy has for you. I mean, you really have the angels really willing to help. I mean, they've always been willing to help, but I really feel like they're coming forward even more now than the past. And they're saying because it's necessary. But you have to ask. They're not just going to interject in your life. You have to ask. There is that whole thing of the law of free will, right? Okay. So look at this. Let's look at this appreciation energy here for you, Divine Masculine. What is this appreciation for the Divine Masculine? What is this? appreciation energy for the divine masculine collective here the ten of wands and you know what i'm getting with this is this ten of wands energy is look at where you're what i'm hearing is look at where your priorities lie for some of you for a lot of you you take it on way too much and you have too many you're you're obligated to two you have too many obligations. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, but you're bound to too many different people and too many different circumstances. And you're not giving enough to yourself, which also would mean giving enough to your counterpart, right? Being there for your counterpart, being able to honor the contract that you have with this person, right? Definitely obligatory energy. With that Ten of Wands. Let's go a little, let's, let's a little bit more, please. Well. And this has fallen out. Oh, man. Okay. Well, Page of Pentacles is at the bottom of the deck, but this has fallen out on strategy here. I wanted to, I wanted to clarify that. So, okay, great. The Emperor and the High Priestess. The Emperor, and so this is part of, this is part of what needs, this is what needs to be part of your strategy the strategizing energy for you, Divine Masculine. That's about to slam shut. Or not. Okay, never mind. Um, taking your power back, taking control of your life, connecting to the higher wisdom of source, God, source, creator. You could even see the high priestess as your higher self. And shutting down a lot of this obligatory energy, all these obligations that were never yours to begin, never meant to be yours to begin with. And with the Page of Pentacles at the bottom of the deck, this is a brand new start for you here, okay? Um, I still want to get a little bit more on, because now I kind of want to ask, like, how do you let this go? How, is, how does the Divine Masculine let this go? All this Ten of Wands energy here. What is this? The Nine of Pentacles. Huh! Stand up for yourself. Be an individual. Stand tall, strong, firm in who you are. Honor your, your, honor your own self with the world at the bottom of the deck. It is time to start living your life as you see fit, not the way others tell you. And that is the lesson that you've been meaning, needing to learn all along. As you see fit. 
not the way others tell you. Now that could lead to you to some pretty debaucherous stuff here <laughs> because I'm kind of picking up a, a level, an energy of like, you know, when you first, when you grow up and you first move out of your parents' house and you just go wild and crazy and just start having all these crazy parties and blah, blah, blah. Okay, sure, you're gonna have to go through that phase. Maybe for some of you. For others of you, it's not even that serious, but <laughs> that was something that just Kate wanted to come through. So, okay, for whomever that is for. And actually, that was more for the divine feminine here to understand just because the masculine is needing to step out on his own and be his authentic, his or her authentic self, that doesn't mean that he's going to start do or they are going to start doing exactly what it is you want them to do. And part of that message was not living your life the way the feminine thinks you should. And that's part of the energy or the message that was coming through in the past where y'all, we're going to have to meet each other halfway here. All right. You're both into, yes, your counterparts, but you're still individuals. Okay. You still have your own personalities, your own desires, your likes, your dislikes, whatnot, whatever, but we have to find a way to harmonize, to meet each other in the middle. Okay. Okay. Let's look at broken heart. What is this broken heart for the divine masculine, please? What is this broken heart for the divine masculine, please? Broken heart for the divine masculine. Well, ooh, wee. Lord of mercy. Okay, we have one card that flew over and fell on top of the 10 of wands and it's the sun in reverse. Bottom of the deck is the nine of wands. We have the eight of swords with death and the page of wands. The eight of swords is mental entrapment. You guys have been trapped in a cage, having to be a certain type of way other than who it is you truly are. And part of what heal, I guess this is a message towards healing, the, your, healing this broken heart, right? This broken heart has come to be because of being in this cage, because of, and the high priestess wants to come out with this too, but the being in this cage and, and not being authentic with the sun in reverse, which landed on the 10 of wands, that's part of this obligatory energy that's been coming through for you. But with the page of wands here, Re-identifying yourself, showing who you truly are is what I'm hearing. A lack of authenticity, a lack of integrity is what has been leading to this broken heart, which has ultimately led to the divine feminine taking such big steps to walk away from the situation, to let go of the situation, to separate herself from the situation, which has then led to a deepening of that broken heart. Some of you actually might feel abandoned by the feminine. I'm not going to lie. Some of you might be feeling abandoned by the feminine, but you, what you need to understand is the fact that she hasn't abandoned you. In essence, you've been abandoning yourself with this lack of authenticity. And so thus she had no choice but to walk away because she's not going to abandon herself in order to be with you or in order to still play this game with you. Not going to happen, buddy. At least not anymore. Wow, underneath the nine of wands is in fact the page of pentacles. Oh my goodness, the four of wands. Oh my goodness, learning your lessons with the seven of pentacles. Oh my goodness, taking a leap of faith with the fool. Oh my goodness, a change in everything with the wheel of fortune. Could be a dark night of the soul coming too, all right? And then, but, but, but ultimately it's going to close everything out with the world, okay? This four of wands is talking about an inner sense of union because of the fact that ultimately you have the opportunity to really learn what it is you need to learn in the seven of pentacles energy, learn through the contrast, yes? I wanna look a little deeper into to this broken heart energy, but actually spirit is guiding me to, to pull from the whispers of love for this. 
And then we're going to get into the closing message for, messages from the angels, and then we'll close out your reading, or your side of the reading, with an oracle messages, message from you from the sacred rebels. Yales? Yales. Yales. <laughs> Last shuffle. Here we go. So in terms of this broken heart energy for the divine masculine spirit, what do you want to say? How can he or she help to heal this? Okay. Woo! All right. They're telling me to take all of them. Overall energy is be willing to express love. That is difficult. I get it. I know it. I was there at one point. It's difficult. But... What's going to help facilitate the healing of your broken heart is to be, get yourself to be willing to express love. And even if it's just you're doing it for yourself, it doesn't mean that you have to be all outwardly, oh my God, I love everyone, like right away. No, start small. Have patience. Both of us, masculine and feminine, have patience, okay? Love is patient and kind always. But, hey, set your boundaries, y'all. The heart of the matter. There's more going on than meets the eye. Recognize what this is all about. So, Divine Masculine, look, you're really going to have to, if you want to heal this broken heart of yours and you want to be a better, you want to be healthier, you want to be happier, you want to be stronger, you have to look at what is going on. You have to be objective. You have got to take up that King of Swords energy and start looking at the truth looking at things as they truly are. Especially if you have people around you that are gaslighting you, that are trying to pull the wool over your eye, that are trying to keep you asleep. Be authentic to who you are, Divine Masculine. You are asked to be real and true pertaining to who you are and how you feel. Some of you are really getting tripped up on this broken heart energy because you're not allowing yourself to be authentic. Interesting. Okay, so what else we have coming through here? We have three more cards, but this feels more for the divine feminine, or at least a message from the divine feminine. First of all, you have spiritual connection. This relationship has a connection that goes beyond the life, this lifetime. You have, I love you. Regardless of what's going on here, Divine Masculine, your Divine Feminine loves you. Even if she is walking away in a way that is like your jaw is just like glued to the ground right now. You just can't believe it. She's literally leaving you in the dust. You, all you see is her back and she's just getting further and further and further away from you. She still loves you. And she's doing whatever it is she's doing, provided she's balanced and in a harmonious state of sense of self, okay? Whatever she is doing, she does, she does it because she loves herself, but she's also doing it because she loves you. Because if you are living from this place of a broken heart here, then you're living a pretty toxic life. Not gonna lie. Just gonna call a spade a spade. And she is not in any way going to help enable that behavior within you. She's not going to help you facilitate that. No. Absolutely. Absolutely not. Okay. <laughs> no. All right. But then feminine, listen with your heart. You are listening to what is being said to you, but you need to listen with a loving heart. That's a message from you. That's, ma that's more of a message for you from the Divine Masculine Collective if you two are in some sort of sense of union or communication. For others of you, though, this is a message to you, masculine, for yourself. Are, you're listening, but are you listening with an open heart? You must listen with an open heart in order to really get to the heart of the matter, to order, in order to really get to what's really going on at the bottom, underneath the surface, okay? All right, so closing messages now. We're going to start with the Oracle of the Angels, and then we will get your Oracle guidance from the Sacred Rebels. So with all of this angel energy, Archangel Uriel, Archangel Gabriel, Archangel Raphael, and then this Angel of Patience, which I do see as a temperance card, what messages do 
the angels have for the Divine Masculine Collective. One last shuffle. Woo! That's enough already, they say. Okie dokie. What do you want to tell us for the Divine Masculine? Take all of them and stop there. Okay. Overall energy is believe. Uh, believe in yourself, Divine Masculine. Why? Because you have infinite potential. You can literally be anything you want, anyone you want. Why not allow yourself to be your true and authentic self, to be who you truly are, to be who God created you to be, whatever, God, source, creator, I don't know who, whoa, don't freak out on me, but be whoever you were meant to be, created to be in this life, regardless of any conditioning and social in, uh, 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 conditioning and social environment, social influence, all that crap, right? You have truth. You have an opportunity to get to the truth, to honor your truth. And it's going to be presented to you until the day you die, guys. It's always going to, even in your next lifetime, it's going to be presented to you. It's not like you're ever going to really not have this opportunity. You just have to take it. You then also have, just like the feminine, you have letting go. Letting go of the past, letting go of what's hurt you, whatever has provided you with this brokenhearted energy. And then finally, you have power and heaven's door. You have the power at your disposal, the power of heaven, the power of God, the power of source, the power of the universe, the power of creator, whatever. The door is right in front of you. All you've got to do is claim it. All you've got to do is claim this energy. You have the power and the infinite potential to embody the truth. But you have to choose to take it. It's your choice and your choice only. I really do feel like there is a special opportunity right now. Whatever is happening between you and your divine counterpart is providing you with an extremely extremely, like a once in a lifetime opportunity to finally let go of some, some things and really get to the truth. And she's providing you this to you by walking away. I know it doesn't seem like, it seem, that sounds kind of sounds like an oxymoron, but it's the truth. Okay. All right, cool. So let's close out this reading here with your Oracle guidance. Last shuffle for the Divine Masculine Collective. What have we got? Oh, that's too many, Spirit. Just one, please. Oh. Well, you have card number two. Inner trust. Though it may be cloaked and hidden, within you lies natural magnificence, vibrancy, and true uniqueness. The harder this is for you to believe, the more growth this oracle is offering you now. Your opportunity for growth lies in letting go of the need to hide yourself from the world and to let go of any doubt about the wonder of what lies within you. This oracle brings the message that it is time for you to trust yourself and to let the real inner you out from behind the veil. You are being assured that you can trust your intuition and your own sense of things. Sometimes what you sense will be love and you will open your heart and more easily move, I'm sorry, and move easily towards the source of that love, be it in the form of another person, a new career path, a project which you care deeply about and want to pursue, or a spiritual or creative practice that you are keen to explore. Sometimes what you sense will be more challenging than this and will ask something different of you. It might be that you sense fear and sabotage lurking within someone's intentions or in the situations around you. This oracle asks you to trust yourself to find the most authentic and self-loving way to deal with that. 
Perhaps you have drawn this card because you are unnecessarily holding yourself back out of fear or a lack of belief in your ability to support and care for yourself or in the importance of your need for self-expression in your relationships. The Oracle of Inner Trust comes to you with this guidance. You know what you're doing. You have enough wisdom and intuition to be able to place yourself more fully in the world, to take steps to unhide yourself. Even if you feel you have no clue about what is happening at a broader level in your life, even if you can't quite see the whole picture of what is taking place within or around you, you still have all the wisdom and intuitive ability you need to take one step at a time and navigate your way through absolutely anything that life brings to your door. If you have been take, thinking of taking a leap of faith and doing things differently, whether in your personal life or your creative work, then this oracle brings a particular message to trust your instincts and go for it. This oracle comes at a time when the patterns of your life are shifting. You can take advantage of this shift and leap into an entirely new level of consciousness and experience. This is not a time for self-doubt or playing small. It is a time to get in touch with the courage, boldness, and daredevil within and to take that step, big or small, into the future that is beckoning you forward. You have the wings to fly. Sometimes we don't realize it until we leap over the edge of what we have known and begin to soar into a new life. So there you have it, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. Um, if you'd like a look into your own personal situation, please don't hesitate to email me. All the information is in the description box below. Yeah. With that said, though, I, I I'll guess I'll see you guys next week. Well, I don't know. We'll see what happens. But I love you all so much, and I hope you have a fantastic day. Mwah! Bye.